It's official. The United States is now the number one destination for all Bitcoin miners around the world. Before the United States, China was the number one producer of Bitcoin. And to be honest, a lot of Bitcoin miners and other cryptocurrency miners have been turning to the United States for a long time. The United States has a ton of unique advantages that Bitcoin miners like to utilize. And there's a lot of things that Bitcoin miners can do and resources that they can use that a lot of other countries just don't have. But now that the United States is the number one producer of Bitcoin in the world, doesn't that mean they're also going to be facing a lot of the environmental problems that comes with Bitcoin mining? I mean, isn't that the reason that China actually banned cryptocurrency in the first place? Like I said, the United States is very unique when it comes to cryptocurrency. And lately there has kind of been a perfect storm to create the perfect place for Bitcoin miners to come and mine Bitcoin. So today I wanna to talk all about Bitcoin mining and why the United States is now the number one destination for Bitcoin miners. I also wanna talk about the environmental effects that are going to come now that the United States is the top place for Bitcoin miners. In addition, I want to take a look at what could be coming for Bitcoin miners in America in the future, and if the United States will remain the top dog in Bitcoin mining for the foreseeable future. Because as most of us know, Bitcoin is a big business. And as cryptocurrency continues to expand and grow across the United States and the world, the amount of regulations that come with it are going to need to expand as well. Because the United States is not the capital producer of a lot of different things, but we are now the capital producer of Bitcoin. So what exactly does that mean? Well, we're going to be breaking down all of this and more. So make sure to stick around till the very end to learn everything you need to know about Bitcoin mining and the United States as the capital Bitcoin producer. But before we get into all of that, do me a quick favor and smash that thumbs up button below and hit that notification bell too. That way YouTube shows our videos to way more money mines around the world. We can keep making videos just like this one. Bitcoin has been around a long time, but the idea of Bitcoin and the actual processes that come with mining and creating it didn't just come out of nowhere. Bitcoin was created back in 2009 by a guy named Satoshi Nakamoto, or at least that's what we think his name was. We don't actually know the creator of Bitcoin as their identity has never truly been revealed. And this was the world's first major decentralized digital currency, which means that it was not under the control of a central government like the United States government or China. Instead, Bitcoin would be controlled by the people and all of the miners that create it. In addition, Bitcoin has a lot of limits that traditional currencies just don't have. The US government can just simply print as much US dollars as they like. But Bitcoin has a set amount that can ever be created. And right now that amount is 21 billion Bitcoins. The reason for this is because Bitcoin is seen as an alternative investment. And an investment is something that investors use to beat inflation and actually allow their money to make them more money. The United States dollar and a lot of traditional currencies for that matter are inflation producers, meaning that the more of it that is used and printed, the less it's actually worth. This initially intrigued a ton of investors because they saw it as a digital gold, so as a commodity like regular gold. If the US dollar or other traditional currencies are not doing well, people can put their money into Bitcoin because one of the other benefits of Bitcoin is that it does not need to be exchanged for another currency in order to be used. So if you went across the world to Great Britain and all you had was US dollars, you would have to exchange exchange your money for British pounds. Once you have British pounds, you can then spend your money. But when you come back to the United States, you can't just give people British pounds. Not many businesses are actually going to accept that as a form of payment. So you're going to need to exchange your money back into US dollars. This can be a time consuming process and is just not feasible if you travel. Not to mention there is an exchange rate for your currency. So when you go to another country and want to use that currency, the value of all of our currencies are are different. So for instance, if you were to go to the United Kingdom or Britain and take one US dollar, you would have around 73 cents in British pounds. And vice versa, if you take one British pound and bring it to the United States, you'll have about $1.36, meaning your British pound is actually worth more in the United States. You actually have more money than you would in the United Kingdom. With Bitcoin, the process is completely different. The value of Bitcoin remains the same in every country. So one Bitcoin and its value is going to be the same in the United States, Canada, the UK, 
Spain, Russia, China, any country that allows the use of Bitcoin, the value is going to be the same. Now, of course, this is very different if you want to exchange Bitcoin for actual dollars, but that is a completely different conversation and the exchange rates for that are different because remember, you're exchanging a currency for another currency. But if you use Bitcoin as a practical tool to buy things, the value of it, like I said, it's completely universal. You can use it anywhere in the world. And this is one of the other benefits that investors see when they put their money into Bitcoin and buy them. One of the other benefits to Bitcoin is that it is completely anonymous. So when you purchase something with your debit or credit card, that transaction and payment is tied to you, a bank account, or whatever financial institution that you're using. However, when you buy something with Bitcoin, it's not exactly tied to a specific bank account or financial institution. I should say that sometimes it can be if you use a specific type of online wallet or an online crypto bank that you don't have to in order to use your money. Think of it this way. It would be like if you were to buy everything only with cash. If you were to spend only cash on things and there's no way to track any of your transactions, mainly because there was no real paper trail other than a receipt and there was no online database of you actually making that transaction. The only one that knows is you and the cashier. With Bitcoin, it's the exact same way. You can hold your money in offline wallets that allow you to trade and exchange for other things. So Bitcoin and eventually other cryptocurrencies were built to fill the void that traditional currencies could not. And even though Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are not really backed by any real world assets, they still retain a ton of value because people believe in the software and believe in them as a viable form of payment. And if you get enough people to actually back that system, it becomes a legitimate currency. And it's not really much different than traditional currencies that we have today. So with all of this being said, you would think that Bitcoin would have exploded back in 2009. But the fact is, Bitcoin didn't really start to take off till many years later. In fact, the very first commercial transaction of Bitcoin to ever take place was well over a year after Bitcoin was created. A guy named Laszlo purchased two Papa John's pizzas for 10,000 Bitcoin. If you know anything about the Bitcoin market, your jaw probably just dropped on the floor because one Bitcoin today is worth around $57,000. Back then though, Bitcoin was worth literally cents. Today though, 10,000 Bitcoins would be worth worth around $570 million. This is because not a lot of people actually knew about Bitcoin. They didn't know how to trade it and they did not see it as a viable currency. Another thing to keep in mind here too is that the internet and online presence was not nearly as embedded into a lot of our lives back in 2009. I mean, you gotta think back in this time, a lot of us were still using MySpace as the top social media platform and Facebook hadn't even hit 500 million users. In fact, Facebook specifically had just barely made a profit five years in by 2009. So for the most part, the internet was not as big as it is today. I mean, you didn't have Instagram, TikTok, or a lot of these social media platforms. Today, being on YouTube is a career. Back in 2009, that was barely starting to begin. Bitcoin suffered because of that. There was not a lot of widespread online presence for it. And for the most part, people just didn't know about it. But as all things, that began to change over time and as the internet grew and expanded, so did Bitcoin. The price of one Bitcoin went from around $13.13 .13 in 2013 to well over $770 in 2014. That's just one year and an exponential price jump. But as Bitcoin began to grow, it started to run into some serious problems too. One of the first major obstacles that Bitcoin needed to overcome was that most of the people using it were on the Silk Road, which was an online black market where people could buy illegal things. This hurt Bitcoin's image a lot, and it took several years for people to understand that Bitcoin was not just being used for the Silk Road. It had real world applications too, and was a serious competitor to traditional currencies. And eventually people started to catch on to Bitcoin and what it could offer its users, like anonymous spending, global use, Usage and as a way to beat inflation. It began rising and rising in price until it hit an all-time high of around $20,000 for one coin back in 2017. But prices didn't stay there for long. A major world superpower, China, decided that it was going to ban cryptocurrency trading. That essentially cut the price of one Bitcoin in half, and the price continued to suffer after that. Like I said, if the world doesn't actually adopt cryptocurrency and people can't 
use it and see it, it's not going to be able to survive. Since that time though, the price of Bitcoin stayed around the three to maybe $10,000 mark for one coin, which is still really, really good for that market. And since then, a lot of people have been able to join the cryptocurrency market because of these low prices. Additionally, a lot of investing platforms have offered fractional investing for beginners to get in on the crypto game without actually spending three, four, five thousand dollars all at one time. Things were flat for Bitcoin for several years, and it's right around this time that you started to see an explosion of other cryptocurrencies around the world. People began to experiment with the blockchain technology that cryptocurrency runs on, and the market began to explode. To date, there are over 10,000 cryptocurrencies in the world. That completely outnumbers the amount of traditional currencies there are. It always seemed like Bitcoin remained on top though, at least in price. Even today, Bitcoin is the most valuable cryptocurrency in the world. And by the start of 2020, Bitcoin was ready to take the world by storm. And over the next year, it would take its value from around 7,000 US dollars to almost 65,000 US dollars for just one coin. A lot of this was expanded due to the pandemic. People were scared. People did not know what was going to happen next and they weren't sure if their money was even going to be valuable. In addition, we saw the S&P 500, NASDAQ, and Dow indexes drop by some of their largest rates in almost 100 years. Like I said, people were scared. They weren't sure what to do with their money, and a lot of investors wanted to have their money be protected. So one thing investors like to do to protect against inflation and a stock market crash is to actually hedge their money. Basically, all this means is investing in assets that have universal value. So for instance, physical gold and silver has the same value across the world. It is desirable, people want to spend money to buy it. But if you trade in US dollars and all you have in your bank account is US dollars, you can't really use that across the world if people don't want it. So the whole point here is to actually buy an asset that protects you against inflation or a stock market crash. That way you get to keep more money in your pocket instead of losing money. The actual hedge here would be the asset that you buy and you get to go right over the economic problems. And like I said at the beginning of this video, Bitcoin is seen to have universal value, just like gold. So people started to invest a ton of money into Bitcoin. Other cryptocurrencies began to explode too. Like you saw the world's second most valuable cryptocurrency, Ethereum, jump in price twofold. It went from around one to $2,000 to well over $4,000 in the same time frame. In addition, you had other cryptocurrencies like Dogecoin go from around six to seven cents in value, all the way up to almost 60 cents in value. This made a whole lot of people very rich for at least a very short short period of time. One of the hardest things for investors to understand about the crypto market is that it is very volatile, meaning that prices fluctuate very quickly and prices can go up and down very fast. And because there was so much interest in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, a lot of major companies and countries began to jump on the bandwagon. You saw El Salvador state that it would actually begin to accept Bitcoin as a viable currency alongside its own currency. And you saw a lot of super prominent companies and banks like Bank of New York and Tesla begin to expand their business into the crypto space. So for instance, Bank of New York, for instance, Bank of America announced that it would allow people to actually start storing Bitcoin in their bank account. And Tesla, on the other hand, announced that it would allow people to purchase its vehicles with Bitcoin. It finally started to look like Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies were going to become the next big thing. Cryptocurrency wasn't a theory anymore. This was real and people were using it to buy real world things. And from the beginning of 2020 till about the middle of 2021, the price of Bitcoin was exploding. Like I said, at one point it reached around 65,000 US dollars for just one coin. But then the coin started to run into some major issues. People started to find out what it actually took to create one Bitcoin. The process to create a Bitcoin is called mining. And all that really means is continuously running a software program on your computer until a hash is formed. Once that hash is formed, you now have a specific code for a Bitcoin. That Bitcoin is stored on a blockchain, which is basically just a decentralized server that connects all Bitcoins and all the blockchains together. All of these hashes are recorded on the blockchain. So there's no way that any Bitcoin can be recreated because there is only one unique hash connected to one Bitcoin. It's all fine and great, except for the actual mining process takes up a ton of energy. Like for instance, 
the current Bitcoin mining market uses around 0.5% of all of the world's electricity. And when the general public and a lot of these companies started to figure this out, they pulled their Bitcoin promises. So, so no longer would you be able to purchase vehicles with Bitcoin at Tesla and a ton of other companies went back on their promises too. This initially crashed the price of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies because a lot of people were concerned about the environmental effects that crypto has on the world. And this is one of the major reasons why China decided to ban cryptocurrencies altogether over this past summer. China was the number one location for Bitcoin miners. Somewhere between 40 and 50% of all of the Bitcoins mined in the world were done so in China. This was a huge addition to the world's carbon footprint and China was already facing a major pollution and energy problem. So in September of 2021, China decided to cut off all cryptocurrency in general. You could no longer mine, trade, or hold crypto within the country. I made an entire video breaking this China crypto ban down even further and what that actually means for the crypto market and maybe some other reasons why China may have wanted to ban crypto. So if you want to check out that video, I will link it for you in the description below. The overall thing to note here is this. China banned cryptocurrency. So 40 to 50% of all of those Bitcoins had to be mined somewhere else. A lot of the miners actually had to leave and flee China. With this China crypto ban, that basically expanded and made a lot of crypto miners get very creative about how they mine the coin. And a lot of them ended up in the United States as the US now produces around 35% of all of the Bitcoins in the world. This and a lot of non-regulation from the world has led to another boom in crypto prices. I mean, Bitcoin was hovering around the $30,000 to $40,000 mark back in August, but now it's around the $57,000 mark in October. But you're probably wondering if China banned cryptocurrency because of its environmental effects and the negative effects that it has on our climate, then doesn't that mean the United States is now going to face all of these energy problems? Well, this is one of the main reasons why a ton of those Chinese Bitcoin miners decided to come to the United States. States like Texas, New York, and Kentucky give new Bitcoin miners a ton of advantages. It's like New York are experimenting with hydroelectric energy, which is way better for the environment, and Texas has its own individual power grid that is self-sustaining. Other states like Kentucky are using a ton of nuclear power in order to become more energy efficient. This has made the United States a number one destination for a ton of those crypto miners. And a lot of these resources were not available abroad, specifically in China. In addition, North America has seen a rise in actual crypto mining companies like Core Scientific. That means it's not just up to individuals to create Bitcoin, we actually have full-on companies that create Bitcoin now. And when you have an entire company doing this, you have the resources that come behind a company. You have the actual land to produce the Bitcoins on. You have the actual servers and technology to be able to continue to build a better infrastructure around Bitcoin mining. And of course, you have a full on legal team to make sure that everything that they're doing meets standards and practices. That ultimately is going to be a lot better than just one person sitting in their bedroom mining Bitcoin. And for Bitcoin, this is only the beginning. If it's a able to master renewable energy, and you may see a ton more companies and back onto Bitcoin and the price of Bitcoin skyrocket again. Each and every day, the United States and other countries, and each and every day, the United States and other countries pour more and more money into renewable energy sources. Just like how we've seen a major jump in electric vehicles, we may see a switch in Bitcoin as well. But now I wanna hear from you on this issue. Do you think the United States will continue to be the number one destination for Bitcoin? Bitcoin miners? Or do you think it too will fall and a lot of these miners are going to go elsewhere? In addition, what do you think about using renewable energies to mine Bitcoin? Do you think that they are the wave of the future or do you think that more traditional mean better for mining Bitcoin. Whatever your thoughts are, leave a comment in the section below before you go. That is it for today's business and financial news breakdown. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. Keep hustling money minds and I'll see you all in the next one.